A very good evening to you. Thanks for joining us on the Thursday edition of the show. It promises to be exciting, as always. I'm Yemi Adebayo. Well, on the show tonight, uh, it's all about the Super Falcons of Nigeria as they chase the ticket for the women's football event at the 2024 Olympic Games. They'll be up against Banyana, Banyana of South Africa. We'll talk about that game uh, all for you. We'll also take a look at what is happening in the domestic scene talking about the Nigeria Premier Football League and, of course, the English Premier League. It's hotting up uh, as we speak. Manchester United and Chelsea um, up against each other. Sheffield United and Liverpool also uh, some of the matches we'll be looking at. It's a two-man show. My colleague, Austin Okona, is suited and ready. And, of course, we're ready to go. It's quite a great to you, Yem, and everyone joining us on the show tonight. Still an action-packed world of sports, Yemi. Yeah, drama in that game between Chelsea and Manchester United. I was following the game. I thought, okay, let me go get ready for the show. And I came back to my TV screen, and it's Chelsea 2, Manchester United 2. Eli Groba Gallagher in the fourth minute for Chelsea, and then Cole Palmer scored from the spot to make it Chelsea 2, Man U 0. But in all the 10 minutes, Manchester United got back into it. And the last time I checked, Liverpool, they're struggling against Sheffield United. It's 1-1. That's why I want to open it by saying this dramatic English Premier League night, you mean? It is. Uh, let's also bring in our guest uh, in the Lagos uh, studio uh, to join in the drama, uh, Bolu. Omani he joins us. Uh, greetings to you, Bolu. Uh, thanks for finding out time to be with us uh, on the show today. Yeah, good to be again, and uh, good to see you again after a yeah, very, very long, long time. And uh, <laughs> uh, picking up from where Austin left, it feels like, you know, when Siamese twins are together, it's always difficult to separate. That's uh, the guys we are seeing today. Uh, it's called the El Trashito, the Chelsea and uh, Ch uh, Manchester United. Mm -hmm. Chelsea felt they were flying. United said, wait, let's just end it the same way. It's just the beauty of football. Beauty of football. I tell people every day, no matter what happens, even if it's 99th minute, so long it's not the final whistle, there's always light at the end of Victoria football. We can see that going on right there at Stamford Bridge. And I can't wait to see the Super Falcons at the Olympic Games. It's been years. It's been almost two decades. Mm -hmm. So, Bayana, Bayana. Let, let's just show, I know they are good. I know they are the African champions. Let's just show them with the real bosses and we can qualify for the Olympic Games. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's surprising. We seem to get it well, get it right on the continent. But when it gets to the Olympic qualifiers, uh, maybe we just conspire to just bungle it. Uh, but we're hoping it's going to be different uh, this time out. I'm going to go across in a bit to look at the match details and talk about that game. Uh, Bolu set the tone for what we're going to discuss. We'll also take some reactions uh, from the camp uh, of uh the Super Falcons, of course, they had a visit from uh, the sports minister, John Eno. Uh, he had a few words to say. But before we do all of that, let's quickly uh, situate things properly as I go across uh, to uh, take a look at uh, what's going to happen tomorrow. Two-legged affair, the best from two legs, will proceed to the women's football event at the Paris uh, Olympics. So uh, there you have it, the match details, Paris 2024, ticket up for grabs. Friday's fixture, that's tomorrow, is going to happen. Nigeria, the Super Falcons of Nigeria, up against Banyana Banyana of South Africa. The venue is the Moshuda Abiola National Stadium in Abuja, and the time is 5 p.m. Bolu, what do you think is going to happen? Well, okay, let me start from my worry. It's the same thing I complain about the Super Eagles every time. Some persons have said, okay, you are talking about this thing. Yeah, I said I will continue to talk about it until there's a change. Lateness to trade to camp. I don't know how that thing always happens. People say it happens in some other Africa. I don't care about some other African countries. This is Nigeria. This is Nigeria. I said, yeah, I think Wednesday morning or Tuesday evening, there were about 14 players in camp. And there were lamentations from fans, people, stakeholders. I mean, like, fear not. I will be scared. My nation has not qualified for the big in 16 years. And we have a very important game. Camp has opened two days to the games, and the camp is not full. That is my fear. That's my worry. The flip side is they've had a good run. Together with the superstars, they've had a good run. With the second tier, they've had a good run. It just means that bringing them together, there's going to be synergy. Hopefully, it works out well. A gets injured, B replaces her immediately Straight without away. stress. So, I like that with the team. That's why I'm pumped up. I'm hopeful. But this first leg is at home. You have to do your best. The last round, South Africa sold tickets at home. And they still had a very large crowd 
in their stadium. It means everything Falcons must do. They have to do that. I've listened to Bayana Bayana coaches are not talking about hostile atmosphere. Black. We don't do hostility in Nigeria. But the stadium needs crowd. We need to cry. We need to shout. But most importantly, the players need. I don't care who plays this time. My sister Doshola, I love her. I don't care if she plays or not. I don't care if on whoever plays. Just defeat South Africa by at least two goals. Then we can settle the rest in South Africa. Uh, it's a big chance for this generation. Who knows? Uh, some of them might not get another chance if they miss uh, this uh, opportunity. Uh, let me allow Austin to join in <laughs> the conversation. Um, it, it appears that all hands are on deck to ensure that these girls uh, get it right and, of course, get to play at the Olympic Games. And it's not just Nigeria that is taking this game seriously. I mean, the South African High Commission in Nigeria, they are, they are embarking on a fantastic mobilization program to ensure that South Africans in Nigeria come out at the MK Abiola Stadium to support the Bayana Bayana. That just tells you the importance of this game tomorrow. The Super Falcons they vowed that they will play the game of their lives. I like that they also understand the mission, but this sort of game, you need to try as much as you can to, to approach it with that pressure. They need to calm down and just say to themselves that, look, before South Africa started doing what they were doing, or well, what they are still doing that is giving them respect, we are the most respected team in Africa. In fact, if we go by the ranking of the last Women's World Cup in New Zealand and Australia, the Super Falcons were the best African team at that competition. Now, we know the problem. If you put these two teams side by side, they both have talent. It's just that these ones that we are seeing now, that is coached by Desri Ellis, they have more attention. They have properly strategized plans. They have investments in women's football in South Africa. When these women cough, the government, the Ministry of Sports in South Africa, everybody, they ask, oh, what's going on? They need to attend to them, lest the entire country starts catching cold. That's the difference. I said it on this show, that the moment we finish the, the World Cup and this qualifiers come, that's the only time we'll be talking about the Super Falcons. What are the sort of programs that we put in place to you know, ensure that they keep that superiority, that mentality that we saw right there at, at the World Cup in Australia and New Zealand? I'm confident that they'll win tomorrow. I know that they will win tomorrow. Come for me after this show. I know the Spoke Falcons will win. But what happens in South Africa is also going to determine. So if they win 3-0 tomorrow, fantastic. They go out there, score one more goal. But if they do it the way we saw against Cameroon, South Africa, to an extent, they now know how to play the big teams in Africa. And that's why they are bossing the continent. It will be difficult. I don't want 2-0. I'll take 3-0. I'll take 3-1. I'll take 4-1. I'll take 4-0. It's difficult at this stage with women's football, but if we go by the need, who needs to win this game to be at the Olympics? I'm sure if you ask the organizers of the Olympics, yes, some will come for me again because I'm Nigerian. They would rather have the Super Falcons at the Paris Olympics because we, we are Nigerians. We come with our pumps and vibes. So all the best to the Super Falcons. I don't want to, you know, jump on some of the things Bolu talked about. The problems are those problems. We've always talked about it. And until we solve those problems, they'll remain problems. But I want to stay with the talent and the importance of this qualifier against South Africa. Wish the girls all the best. Go out there, make the country proud, and qualify for the Olympics, hear me? All right. Uh, well, it's time to listen to uh, the key players, the stakeholders, the critical, uh, the, 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 the people who are critical to all of the things we're talking about. Uh, let's allow you to listen to the coach of the Super Falcons and, of course, also listen to uh, the sports minister. Let's take that back to back. And, of course, we'll come uh, to discuss some more on all the things around uh, the Olympics, the final qualifying round uh, for the women's football event. I, I uh, certainly understand the importance of the match. We don't really look back at what's happened 
the last two matches or really the last 10 matches um, with our opposition because I think what we've worked with our players is to be present now in the moment with what we have. I think if you look back at those last two matches, we were, if you look at our roster, it was a completely different roster than we've had since the World Cup. Um, so I, I don't think you can put a lot of weight into that. Having said that, we certainly respect South Africa. We know what they bring. We know the talent that they, they possess. And we know they're a, a, a great side. But we, we feel very strongly that, that we've got the, uh, we're the team to beat. And we feel very confident going into the match. And, um, you know, at this point, we're just excited uh, about tomorrow. It, it needs to hurry up and get here. Every coach in every situation would always like things to be done a little differently, a little better, whether it's us here or any of the other teams. So as coaches, you always worry about your preparation. Is it is it perfect? But I think for us, uh, our players are in a really good place, and uh, I think they're in a very good place mentally. And even though we had a few late arrivals to camp, um, you know, and we. It's been well documented. We have a couple of key injuries, um, but I think the players that we have are ready to step up and um, and show their worth of being selected, you know, to this team uh, to show that they can do the job as well. And we, have, as a staff, we have all the confidence in um, in the players that are here, uh, ready to play. And and so, you know, on the day, it's there's no excuses one way or the other. It's we have what we have, they have what they have, and. It's, it'll be which team shows up, you know, the most prepared and, and ready to, to get the result. I'm really confident, as I said, with the team. I, I feel good about the squad that we selected. Um, if you follow our players back with their clubs at home, it was interesting the last two weeks. Most of our attacking players are scoring goals for their clubs, so they're all coming in in really good form right now. So I'm I'm confident with the team. I'm, I'm excited about the game. and. Any good competitor um, wants to play against the best competition. And so uh, we'll embrace that challenge and, and look forward to it. Uh, you know, to listen to the coach and listen to the captain say all what they've said, I mean, tomorrow's game is, is as important as it can be. And I'm sure everybody appreciates and understands so. I mean, every Nigerian is looking up to are coming out strong tomorrow with a clear victory over the South Africans. I mean, we understand the second leg is just less, just a few days after tomorrow's match. You know, so there's nothing more to say to the coach. I mean, everything he should do, I believe, is done. Or to the captain. I mean, I listened to the captain talk about the fact that they need to go to the Olympics. I mean, that is alone. I mean, that desire, that goal, is not just her goal or the goal of the team, it's the goal of the entire country. I mean, that alone is sufficient and is enough for the Falcons to overcome whatever opposition that the South African team is going to constitute tomorrow. And so the idea is that every support we need to give this team, we should give this team. I mean, it's um, my hope, and I'll try to engage and see how much publicity can actually be given and can be made in the remaining time that there is. You know, because, I mean, there's no fun playing at home when you don't find the crowd and the spectators having to cheer you up. Then it makes a home match almost the same like playing away. So my hope is that that will not just be allowed to the NFF or to the ministry, but that all the journalists that are here, the entire media people, you know, use every means that is available to them to promote this match and encourage people to come and watch and to cheer this team up. All right, uh, coach of the team and of course the sports minister, John Eno. Um, to, uh, I almost said to me, Bolu, you, you've listened to both of them. Uh, critical stakeholders, each one of them saying the things uh, they need to say. You know, the best players in the world want to play in the big games. And no matter all the issues we've talked about before the game, everybody wants to ensure that Nigeria qualifies. And it, it looks like he has the makings of the, the seriousness attached to it from the ministry, from the players. 
it looks like there will be any negative headlines and we can focus on the game. Hopefully we don't uh, see any at the end. Like Austin Riley said, we want to win this and win very well, win comfortably, win without stress. That no matter the atmosphere you get in South Africa, just even if you lose, lose narrow and still end up qualified. Because the truth is, the Olympic Games for women, football event, is almost the same thing as the Women's World Cup. Unlike the men that is uh, under the 23 with three over eight players, the women's game is your national team. Senior it women's team. Yeah, exactly. And naturally, Olympic gold medal is huge for anybody. Then the fact that it's your own national team that also represents, so I think it's good. Everyone to the last Africa Cup of Nigeria showed everyone supports Nigeria. All those stories of I don't care, I don't watch, I know they watch Nigeria. It's a lie. When the team do well, you know that oh, everyone supports Nigeria. Everyone wants to watch. So I hope everyone, not even hope, I believe everyone wants Nigeria to qualify and will give every support. And hopefully the atmosphere is good enough for the players. Like Randy Waldrum rightly said. Almost, if not all, our players are in good form for their club size. Asad doing well for BFC, the club she just joined. Recently, Arshida Chadibadi won't play of the month for our club. Our play, Ashley Plum is a defender for sure. I think she picked up a knock. Mm -hmm. Also, scoring goals for our club in South Africa. So, all these girls are doing well individually. My hope and prayer, like we always do, is for them to come together and the synergy works well. If the synergy works well for them, it means with my eyes closed, I can send the ball from A point A to point B. And I'm sure it's going to someone wearing green. Not someone wearing yellow or whatever. So if all things being equal for Nigeria, the preparation looks good in terms of the administrative level. Hopefully everything gathers well on the field of play and they get to the necessary goals they need to score. All right. Um... I mean, the, the words that Austin used before he handed what he said the other time is what I'm thinking about. If we'll win, will it be enough? That's a question. It, it, I mean, it's hard to imagine Nigeria losing. It's hard. But stranger things have happened in, in football. So the big question is, will it be enough? Uh, so also, the ball is your court. Uh, everybody's saying the right things, and hopefully uh, it will turn out well for the Super Falcons tomorrow. Yeah, that's it. You know, the good thing is everyone seems to understand the importance of the match. As I said earlier, no pressure because we've seen it over and over again. When they put so much pressure on themselves, they go out there and they make mistakes or they cannot perform, you know, uh, to the level that we expect them to perform. So they just need to calm down, say to themselves, this is South Africa. We know, uh, Kutran Wardrum has said it, that they will, they will respect them for everything that they've done for women's football in Africa. But it doesn't mean that they cannot be beaten. And I say it again, if you ask who deserves to be at the Olympics this time around, it's the Super Falcons of Nigeria. But the Bayana Bayana team, they are preparing and they are talking tough and they are staying focused, doing the right things also. And that's why we're going to have a crack out of a game tomorrow. Let's listen to the coach and captain of the Bayana Bayana side as they get ready to take on the Super Falcons of Nigeria tomorrow. Um, I think this started way before Banyana Banyana even came into existence, uh, when Bafana Bafana was um, back in international football. And the reason I say it's a do or die, because there's no other match after this. Whoever wins goes to the Olympics, and that's why I say it's a do or die. I think the magnitude of the game itself is bigger because it's number one and number two in Africa, and that's Nigeria and South Africa. And that's what makes it so big. When we drew them for WAFCON, the first game was important, but it became a bigger game because it was Nigeria. I don't think there's any else untoward because I'm great friends with Mercy Akide, great friends with Florence, so um, I speak to Randy quite often, not about Nigeria and South Africa, of course, but other matters, but the rivalry stays on the pitch. I think I speak under correction, but great friends with, with Nigerians. Linda plays with Kanu. So if there's any malice there, I don't think the team will do well. I think it's the media and everybody else that blows it completely out of proportion. Because yes, there is rivalry, but it's, but it's always on the pitch. I think when you come up against any team, you want to show your best and you want to be the best. And this is no different. So that's the only rivalry there is. I have a fantastic group of staff, technical staff who are amazing, support staff who are amazing. And like we always say, the players, because they make us look good. So whatever awards or rewards we get, it's not because we, by ourselves. It's because of the team doing well. And we always say if the team does well, the individual will stand out. And I'm just blessed and fortunate that at times or sometimes I'm one of them. I think we cannot be more prepared than what we are. I think our league has also been in season, and that has really helped. The previous um, game against Tanzania was during our preseason. Um, and last year we were minus many players. So from there on... We got in better and better and got more players back. It's a day before the game. If we're not ready, then we're in trouble. <laughs> yeah. 
So uh, we've worked on a lot of things, and uh, today is just you know testing out the pitch and crossing the T's and dotting the I's and the game's tomorrow. So we're ready for the game, and uh, we know it's going to be a tough match. Any game is a tough match, and you cannot underestimate anyone. Doesn't matter who you play against, because you underestimate the team at your own peril. And Nigeria are so many times African champions. You know, been there, done that, done well at the World Cup. So you cannot take that for granted, and you've got to respect that. Well, uh, we know of the results the, of the previous two encounters against Nigeria. We came out victorious, but uh, I keep saying to my mates that we still need to give uh, Nigeria the respect that they deserve. Um, having ruled Africa for such a long time and being undisputed champs in the African continent for a long time, they still deserve the, that respect, and that's what we have for them but also not taking away the capabilities and the talents that we have in our team to go out there and still do it. You know, it has shown that we've made tremendous strides in our journey. Having beaten them twice shows that there is some positives that we've been doing as a nation. So I think that's a motivation to the team, and I think we're going to keep on working on, on, on such um, results to motivate us. Welcome back, Sports Tonight on Channels Television. Just gone by, Bayana Bayana, Coach Desiree Ellis, and the captain of the side, Jane Rafilo, talking about that all important game between Nigeria and South Africa. It's a ticket to the Paris 2024 Olympics, and both sides want it. <laughs> Coach Ellis um, described it as a do or die affair. Well, look, I don't think it's do or die. I said, but that just explains to you how much tension is already going on. And then captain of the side, James, said, look, we've beaten these guys twice. That's advantage for us. Um, they seem overconfident. Would that be good for Nigeria? Well, the do or die part, uh, we do the do. Uh, they can go for the other uh, side of the statement. And, uh, yeah, the captain is talking about the beating Nigeria twice. If you open the book of how many times we've beaten them, but in sports, especially in key games like that, like say in uh, club football, derby matches like this, form is thrown out the window. Yes, it's not a derby game, but like the Israeli Israeli said, this is first against second in terms of the African rankings. And in reality, they are literally the best teams on the continent. It's definitely going to be tough. But I know how good they are talking. I know they are, I know they are ready. And our girls are not talking well. Maybe they like they want to do what Austin Riley says. They want to do the talk and not just talk the talk. So hopefully everything works out well. By this time tomorrow, uh, while the South Africans will be going back home, their heads down or their shoulder. That's what I want to say afterwards. But it's good to say with mouth. Hopefully everything works out well on the field of play. In terms of talent, if we put our players, the only person they have that I feel can match ours, if not better, is their manager. Talking about Israelis, she deserves every accolade she gets on the African continent. But in terms of the players on the field of play, if you put everyone man for man, side by side, I think that they have better players across board. Nadozi has a new name in Europe now. They said they should change their name to penalty saver. We have quality everywhere. But like I've said before, hopefully all these things work out well for Nigeria tomorrow. If the Super Falcons can win 2 nil at least. I don't think that South Africa will be Nigeria 3 0, even if they would win. And going by your prediction, if they can win 3 nil or 4 1, Super Falcons will not lose 3 nil to South Africa and win the second leg. So they have to do the job at the Moshu Dabela Stadium tomorrow. Then we can chill and take a pill for the second leg. I know some might think I've been overconfident. There's nothing wrong with that. You listen to Codes Ruelis and the captain of the Bayana Bayana side. They are beaming with confidence. And that's the sort of mentality they need to take yeah. into that game against Nigeria. So best wishes to the Super Falcons as they take on South Africa tomorrow. Yami, let's talk about the Nigeria Premier Football League. I remember, what did I tell you about midweek games and its drama and away wins? What? A story, March the 28th of the Nigeria Premier Football League gave us. I like Doma. I love Aqua United. They gave us away wins. So, so now I've, I've concluded here that 
it seems Aqua United just wants to be relegated. <laughs> but what can you say about the unstoppable Unzobu Zobu Eimba team? What a story for Eimba. But just take a look at this game Aqua United considered in the sixth minute. Terrible communication between goalkeeper and defender. And that was what, you know, gave the opportunity to Imano Jesam uh, of Doma United to score and gave Doma United only their second away win of the season. And it was just good enough against an Aqua United side that are looking for every point in the world to stay in the Nigeria Premier Football League. Fantastic result for Doma. And if you consider the goal in the sixth minute and you're playing at home, you'd expect that the home side would do just enough to get into it. But Aqua United, they kept firing blanks. Just look at that, for instance. Sunny Manuel and all of the uh, good form he's been showing, he couldn't bring it to bear against Doma United. They lost that one by a single goal. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure you want to talk about the other results, but I love the fact that we saw two away wins, lovely goals scored across different centers. That's the MPFL for you. Yeah, that's the MPFL for you. Let's quickly talk about the results. I go across, as usual, to reel out these results. Interesting midweek matches. Uh, uh, well, uh, 3SC, uh, up shooting, they can say up shooting now. Uh, defeated Cora United 2 0. Sporting Lagos will show you the visuals for, for that one later on. Put the one or draw with Lobby Stars. The Flying Antelope, Antelopes consolidated. Uh, they defeated the Akure Gunners. That's uh, Sunshine Stars 2 0. Now, the game uh, Austin was talking about, uh, of course, the Imba, the Abai Elephants, Hamad, Kano Pillars. Uh, 5 nil. I mean, we expect a game between Carlo Pillars and Aimba to be very tough. Aimba playing at home, they, you know, you, you trust them to win, but not by five goals. Uh, then, of course, you have Abia Warriors uh, defeated Plachi United uh, by a lone goal. All right. Uh, Benel Insurance, uh, we have reason to talk, of course, at their own ground, a way win. <laughs> uh, it happened. Niger Tomatoes uh, beating Benel Insurance 3 1. Uh, Bayesa United had a slim 1 0 victory over Heartland. Then, of course, the game you saw Aqua United losing at home to Doma United. Gobe United and Remo Stars uh, played a goalless draw. Uh, interesting times in the Nigeria Professional uh, Football uh, League. Uh, but let me get your thoughts. Hopefully, maybe we'll be able to see the table. Uh, we'll see if we can do that. But your thoughts, which one of these games I uh, guess you're talking? I know how bad the um, Heartland have been so far. This, but it felt like we were going to get a point in Yenogua until the 92nd minute. They considered the goal and that was it. And it, it just shows how poor. You know, we've been talking about who will get relegated for first, second, third, or whatever. Then nothing anyone will do. Hardland are going down. Same way with Gombe United. But uh, picking from Austin's words, I pity Aqua United. It feels like they're doing everything that we must go down, we must go down because they have the best players off in the league. And you expect them to play the best free flowing football, but things are just not. Is it that what counts the against them? People come exactly. to the Exactly. Everyone's in Canada. And it's like and a little free There's flame. no advantage. So it's poor for them, but men, Inyimba scoring five. And I think everyone is overlooking Rangers. They've crippled up little by little to the top of the table. I think now they've gone about eight or almost ten on beating. As, as a matter of fact, you talk about the table. Let's look at the table now. And uh, Bolu said it. There you have the flying antelopes right there on top after 28 matches, 51 points. Uh, followed by the Abai Elephants, uh, you know, Lobby Stars and Remo Stars uh, bringing up uh, the top four. Uh, Remo Stars have a game uh, here in hand. We'll see what happens with that. But they are on 46 points. Uh, and of course, we must also see uh, Rangers have a good goal difference. Now, the teams below. You could argue that Rivers United have played just 23 matches, uh, but they're where they are, and you don't want your team to be there after match day 28. Uh, they have 31 points. Aqua United, same number of points, uh, but of course they have a goal deficit of minus five. Heartland, uh, the Nazi Millionaires, uh, not really looking too good for them, 23 points. And Gobe United, uh, 22 points. It looks like these two teams are destined for the drop, but you know, a lot of this can happen still. Um, Ten more matches to be played. Uh, we'll see what happens uh, in, in that one. Uh, but, but let me quickly come to Austin uh, as we quickly talk about this and go uh, to the ladies. With ten games to go, it looks like everything is taking shape. Uh, like we always say, if your team is here now, it's hard for them not to be there after those ten games. I know, you know, and if you take a look at 
what Rangers seem to be doing. I said it last time on the show. I'm saying it again. If Rangers keep this momentum going, then they might just win the league because the Flying Antelopes, they're not just playing football. They are also winning off the pitch. This was a difficult game against Sunshine Stars. So I said it also the last time on this show that Sunshine Stars, they've just been quiet, but they haven't been doing badly. And if they had won that game, they probably would have climbed into the top 10. But Rangers needed to do their thing, and they did a 2-0 win to stay relevant, back on top of the table. Just today, they announced the launch of their app. They are doing so much for branding. They are doing everything they can to get us talking about them, even aside just winning football matches. That's what we want of the MPFL. We want to see more professionalism. We want to see state government treat football like business and Rangers seem to be leading the way. So uh, let's see, 10 more matches to go. They have shown that they can compete for the league title and I think they can do it. Who is trying to stop them also? The defending champions, Aimba. Aimba beating Kano Pillars, that 5-0 win is Kano Pillars' heaviest league defeat since a 5-0 loss to Julius Beggar. Guess when? In April 2002, 22 years, years ago, Erimba said, come back. We want to remind you of your pain that you're trying to forget. We for we stop when did we stop talking about Julius Beggar? And Erimba, they are telling us each time they get on the pitch to anybody that cares to listen that they are the team to beat, that there's a reason why they are defending champions. And with that 5 0 win over Kano Pillars, now if you blink, you know, Erimba, the moment they get into that league, that the top of the league table with just single digits to go. Then just give them the title, Yemi. Yeah. So uh, we keep monitoring things. Interesting days ahead. All right. Let's uh, talk about the ladies now and review uh, matches played. Uh, match day 12, the Nigeria Women's uh, Football League. Our next part of call. Uh, let's take a look at some of the things happening with uh, the ladies. The results uh, are the things we want to look at. Uh, and of course, uh, on your screen, you have uh, some of uh, the matches. But here, uh, let's take a look at the results. Group A results is what we're starting with. Dana's ladies uh, playing the goal. Let's draw with Adamawa Queens. Niger Retails uh, beating Royal Queens 3 0. Complex Queens at the 2 1. Uh, victory over Atlant Queens. I mean, with the waxing lyrical about Atlant Queens, some of people have been joking uh, that we should replace the guys with the ladies. They seem to, but, but they lost this one. Uh, Abia Angels lost at home to Nazarawa Amazons by a long goal. Let's take a look at uh, Group B uh, results. And Kitty Queens defeated at Queens 1 0. Sunshine Queens uh, lost at home to Rivers Angels. The game a lot of people wanted to see Delta Queens and Biosa Queens. And then one nil in favor of Delta Queens. And you have Rebel Stars ladies and a slim one nil victory over FC Robo Queens. Uh, Bolu, a quick one. The ladies, um, I, I know definitely you had your eyes on Delta Queens, Biosa uh, Queens, uh, the game involving Riga, River Angels. I'm very sure you were monitoring some of those games as well. I think uh, the game everyone wanted to see, the outcome had to be the Delta Queens versus Biosa. Uh, but uh, the game, the biggest surprise for me had to be Kitty United beating. I don't quit. I, I'm not expecting a Kitty Queens to beat anybody for the remainder of the season, but defeating Edo Queens, I think that has to be the biggest result for them in the club's history because they've been very poor. The questions have been, oh, who would do this? The, the question has been, when would they get relegated? No one is even talking about them if they can survive or not. They're picking up all three points against Edo Queens, they're probably a confidence booster, but Delta Queens and uh, Biosa Queens just shows maturity. Both uh, the two of the best teams we have on the land going head to head. Just one narrow win. Another team that surprised me so far has to be Robo Queens. They've been the most, inc they've been the dustman of the women's game. When you expect them to win, they draw or lose those games. Then when you've given up on them, is when they come up and pick up points as well. So I think that's one of the surprises for me also. And I, I think everyone agrees this side of the draw has to be the toughest side. All right. The biggest boys are from there. Most of the time, the league winners come from that. Team. All right, all right. Uh, I guess we'll leave it uh, there. Uh, Austin, we'll talk about women later because we're pressed for time. Let's go to your end. Uh, let's talk about the games currently going on and the ones that were played yesterday. Um, has anything changed? I'm trying to monitor the situation. It appears that Liverpool has regained control uh, in that game. And what's happening with Chelsea and Manchester United? 60th minutes now in that game between Chelsea and Manchester United. 
and it's still Chelsea 2, Manchester United 2. I told you the story of how Manchester United turned it under five minutes before the break. It was Chelsea that took the lead as early as the fourth minute when Gallagher opened scoring. And then Cole Palmer doubled Chelsea's lead from the penalty spot. In the 34th minute, Ganacho um, pulled one back for Manchester United and then... Uh, ben, um, the captain of the side made it 2-2. There was a fine run by Ari Maguire about five minutes ago in that game. He had a fine run and then released the shot. Gold keeper fingertip save stopped Ari Maguire from scoring. So I like, oh, that's a good one. I hope that I was actually hoping it goes in so that Ari Maguire can be in the news for something good. But at the moment, it's Chelsea 2, Manchester United 2. Liverpool somehow found a way to win that one against Sheffield United. They won by three goals to one to return to the top of the league table. Yeah, I mean. All right, let's talk about the matches played yesterday. Uh, there were some rotation uh, of players for the Gunners, talking about Arsenal, uh, Mikel Arteta, praising his boys uh, for getting uh, the results. He says even if they had not uh, won that game, it wouldn't have made uh, any difference for him. He had to rotate. But of course, he's impressed that his boys got the job done. A lot of people say he's looting town. I mean, uh, what do you... But if they had lost, uh, it would have been a different story altogether. Let's listen to uh, the Gunners manager, Mikel Arteta, speaking about this victory. We'll come to talk some more about matches played yesterday. My players, I were scored in a different ways. I joy to have them fit. Uh, if we want to utilize the squad and, and maximize what we have, they have to play. And, um, and I think it was the, the right moment to do that. And they responded really, really well. And I'm so happy with that because I think we have won again a few players with good confidence physically with the rhythm right now. And, um, and they're going to be really important for us. And uh, when they have the moment, they have to take it. And they certainly did today. And, uh, and they give me every reason every day, uh, regardless of the results, because it's not the right decision or the wrong because of the result. Because if we would have lost the game, then it was because we made the changes. And it's not as simple as that. At the end, you have to do what is right and what they deserve. And, um, and I was full confident that they will respond. We, winning or not winning, then is a, is a different story in football. It's, that means that, that we are there, that we are really close, that we are showing a lot of consistency and quality to, to be able to be fighting in, in the position that we are right now. And, uh, and now that's it. And uh, sleep, eat, prepare well, and now it's Brighton. All right, bottom line, if he had lost, Bolu, nice words from Mikel Arteta. He had to rotate. Players were tired. But, but your thoughts? He, he ended it himself by saying, look, it, the, if he had lost all of these things, people would say it's because he changed those players. He felt those players deserved to play. And at the end of the day, they justified it. Even though he was saying whatever the result, he wouldn't have. But a lot of fans wouldn't take that from him. The only way to justify anything you do is to win. Because if you play the full squad and they had lost, people would have said, at least, still, you should have changed a few players here and then. Like you rightly said, it's Luton Town. Not that you underrated them, at least. Luton are not up there in terms of things that can challenge. If you can rotate against a Luton Town, there's probably no better team you can rotate, uh, well, except maybe Sheffield United. But we saw what Sheffield did as they put Liverpool to the test and later today. Towards the end of the season, in any league, especially the Premier League, those mid-table teams in quote are the ones that can post and sign your Gary, like they say in the local palace. Sometimes the big boys are not even your threats. They are not your problems. You see those teams battling relegation. They are the worst teams to play. The only thing they are fighting for is like you are fighting for food to want to win the title. They are fighting for life for relegation, which makes it very tough. So I think it was a very important win for them. The last games in the Premier League now are finals for the top teams. But as much as they are finals for them, talking about City, Liverpool and Arsenal, they are still finals for the team also trying to survive relegation. The Burnleys of this world, Luton Town, Sheffield, Everton also being dragged uh, into it. Uh, all right, Austin, uh, I mean, it's time to talk about Pep Guardiola. I don't know if you have a few words to say uh, about Arsenal. And, of course, it's waxing lyrical about Phil Foden. Yeah, you know, the Arsenal game, I totally agree with Mikel Arteta. And anyone thinking of playing down Luton, uh, that's, that's wrong. They are not following the Premier League. Because if Luton had won that game at the Emirates, they would have been tied on 25 points with Nottingham Forest. And that means now they can start thinking about surviving relegation. But losing that game leaves them on 22 points. And they are actually uh, third from bottom. Bottom, just tired of Burnley and Sheffield United. The league ends tomorrow, Luton, they will be relegated. So it was important, two games of big, big importance 
Arsenal needed to win to get back to the top of the league table. Luton needed to win to get out of the relegation zone. So who wants it more? Arsenal, because they are chasing the league title and they did just enough. People can run down that game because it's Luton. Are you forgetting what happened when um, Arsenal went to Kenilworth Road? It was so close. I think that game ended 3-2. It was just some touch of brilliance by the Gunners that ensured that they won that one. So you don't want to play Luton Town now. You don't want to play Everton. You don't want to play Nottingham Forest. They need all the points in the world. You don't want to play Crystal Palace. They need all the points in the world to stay in the Premier League. Let's go to uh, Pep Guardiola. Just after uh, playing goalless against us now, we told you the story about Pep Guardiola came out and he, he was telling us all sorts when the, when the media asked him about why do you talk to your players when you know the cameras are on them. I said, because I, cause I'm the star of the, of the team, because I want to talk about me. Then this man helped him to forget his sorrows. Phil Foden, what a story, hat-trick hero in that game against Aston, Aston Villa. And what a way to do it, particularly that third goal, you hear me? And this guy is growing match after match. And it's so heartwarming for Pep Guardiola because when you don't have Haaland that everyone is talking about and some of your key players, and then a young lad just steps up and gets the job done, then you should be proud. Let's listen to Pep Guardiola. Really good game. We create a lot, a lot of chances. At the end, the measure of the team has to see how many chances we create, how many chances we concede, or how many control we have. And today we're we're better. That doesn't mean you have to win, but is the the measure that we have to see. I think it's a really top class player. We know it. So, but still, he's open minded. Has to understand the game. He has to be focused in the things, especially for the tension. Sometimes he's very distracted in exactly what you have to do, fancy defensively, but he has a natural talent, a gift that is special for the pace, for the work ethic is unbelievable, and after have a an incredible sense of goal. You have the sense when had the ball attack in the last line is, oh, he's going to score, he's going to score. You had that feeling. Try to do our job and don't regret, oh, we should have win that game and because they lost after. So we cannot do anything, we don't play against them anymore, so we cannot control what Arsenal and Liverpool will do, but I guess we'll be, we'll be there and what to do is win our game, so it's only we can do. That's right, um, Pep Guardiola are full of praise for Phil Foden. Uh, Bono Phil Foden is just 23 years old, he was born on the 28th of May 2000, the year 2000, and he's showing so much maturity already. Uh, Gen Z player. I remember when Pep Guardiola said a few years ago, even though I thought he exaggerated, though, that Fufodin is the best talent he's seen. The boy is proving it day by day. And one thing that is working for Fufodin is, I don't think he says no to any position Pep tells him. Play first now, yes, sir. Play right wing, left wing, play the number 10 role, play everywhere because he's young. Yeah, the versatility is one of the things that is helping him in the masses. And one thing as well, Phil Foden can hit the ball. Almost every angle he shoots the ball from, he knows how to score well. Anytime the opportunity comes, he plays well. Remember, there were times he wasn't even playing and the boy was not sulking, he wasn't complaining. He put in the shift, he put in the work, and now we can see the result. I think this is a lesson to many players, both young and old. If you are sitting on the bench, it's not to just start crying about it. Find a way to get back into the favor of the manager and repay the face. So I think he deserves every praise for Guardiola is giving to him yesterday. City were down in terms of they were pushed back by Aston Villa, but he rose to the occasion, scored his first career free kick, and got the beautiful trick for Man City yesterday. Good 3 4 1 win for them, and you can't mention yesterday's win. You have to talk about Phil Foden. Yeah, that's right. And before we go, let's throw in this one. Uh, Rafael Nadal as withdrawn from the Monte Carlo Masters. So the comeback that was on the card, delayed, now is further delayed. Uh, and of course, a lot of people are asking, are we ever going to see Rafael Nadal play again? Maybe saving himself for the French Open. Who knows? You know, uh, he might just want to play uh, that one l uh, last uh, big uh, tournament. We'll see. But of course, the news is that he has withdrawn from the Monte Carlo Masters. He says he has to listen to his uh, buddy. All right, Austin, that's how the cookie crumbles. I guess that's the much yeah. we can 
uh, take. Maybe you just tell us yeah. what's happening with Chelsea yeah, and I mean, United. Drama. Drama at Stamford Bridge is now Chelsea 2, Manchester United 3. Beautiful run by Anthony, and he gave a serious pass. You know that kind of pass that you bend it this way? And then Ganacho was also making a fine run, and then a low header, it beat the Chelsea goalkeeper to give Manchester United the lead. What a story. It was a delicious pass and a sweet, sweet goal. That's it. In London, I'm Austin O'Connor, in everything you do, remember, keep talking sports. Bye for now. All right, that's the show. I want to thank Bolu. I'm going to give for his time on the show today. That was a pleasure. Hopefully, we'll get to see another goal by the time we get outside. Oh, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully. All right, that's the show today. We do hope you've enjoyed everything we've been able uh, to do. There's still one more edition for the week, and that's going to be tomorrow. Enjoy the rest of the day. We'll see you tomorrow. I'm Amy Adebayo. Bye-bye now.